This smart ring is being studied by the University of California, San Francisco to see if it can be used as an early warning system against COVID-19. And one of the most important measurements they're using for this is temperature. In this video, I'll compare the temperature measurements of the Aura Ring against the actual morning temperature measurements I've been taking for the last three years. Now, in addition to that, I'll also check if the Aura Ring was able to pick up on those periods where I felt sick and had a slight fever. And finally, I'll check if that also associates with the number of white blood cells in my blood. Because governments around the world are loosening restrictions, it's especially important right now that we get an early warning system for COVID-19. We want to be able to find out who's sick, who they were in contact with and isolate those people from society. And the sooner we know somebody's sick, the better. One of the most common symptoms of the coronavirus is running a fever. However, before getting an actual fever, you might just have a slightly raised temperature for a few days. The problem is if you don't know your baseline temperature, so your normal temperature, you might not notice. So maybe for you, 37 degrees Celsius is a raised temperature, whereas for somebody else, that's their normal temperature. Now the Aura Ring provides a solution for this by automatically measuring your temperature each night on your finger. The question I had though is, how reliable is this measurement on your finger for detecting deviations in body temperature? To test that, I'll be comparing the temperature measurements of the Aura Ring against three different things. So first of all, I'll compare it to my body core measurements that I've been taking in the morning. So I've been doing that for the last three years. I'll also compare it against my more subjective score of feeling sick. So every evening I fill out a questionnaire on my phone about how sick I've been feeling. And I can compare that against the temperature measurements of the Aura Ring. And finally, I'll compare that to the number of white blood cells in my blood, which I've been measuring for the last two to three years as well, where any deviation from normal could indicate that I was actually sick at that time. Let's start with temperature. Now the Aura Ring doesn't actually measure absolute body temperature. It measures deviations from your normal temperature, as you can see in the app here. It measures these each night and I compared those deviations in temperature against my morning body core temperature, which I measured with a thermometer. I said what what in the butt. In this graph, you can see my morning body core temperature over time measured with a thermometer. And I restricted myself to the last 10 months because that's how long I've owned the Aura Ring. And on the Y axis, you see the temperature. So on the left, it's degrees Celsius and on the right, degrees Fahrenheit for those people unlucky enough to grow up without the metric system. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Uh, and you can see there's a lot of normal variation in the mornings. Uh, I'm roughly between 36.2 degrees Celsius or 97.1 degrees Fahrenheit. And at the other extreme, I'm normally at about 37 degrees Celsius uh, maximum or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see there was one moment where I had a really raised temperature at about 37.4 degrees Celsius or 99.3 degrees Fahrenheit. This is not a full-on fever, but definitely uh, a slightly raised temperature. So each dot here is a single day. Now let's compare these measurements against the measurements made by the Aura Ring. So that's what I've plotted here. On the horizontal axis, you see the temperature deviation of the Aura Ring, where zero is my normal. So anything lower means I had a lower temperature, anything higher, so positive, means I had a higher temperature. And on the vertical axis, you see my body temperature in the morning measured with a thermometer. So each dot here is a single day. And this blue line is sort of the average through those dots. And you can see there is a nice correlation between the temperature deviation of the Aura Ring and my temperature in the morning, which means the Aura Ring, which measures your temperature on your finger, is actually able to pick up on increases and decreases in your body core temperature. And what I find especially interesting is that in these moments where I had a slight fever, the Aura Ring was able to pick up on a higher temperature deviation. So this is a good indication that the Aura Ring is able to pick up on you having a possible fever, but it can also actually detect in your normal range your temperature deviations quite well. Now the next thing I want to compare the Aura Ring's measurements to is my subjective feeling of being sick. So every day at the end of the day, I fill out a questionnaire and one of the questions is how sick did you feel on a scale of 1 to 10? So let's have a look at that data. Now here I've plotted over time how sick I felt over the last two months, which is the period that I've owned the Aura Ring. And it's a score of 1 to 10, where 1 means not sick at all and 10 means deadly sick, basically. Um, I only reached a 4 in this period and there was one phase in this period of time 
where I had a common cold, I think. So I felt a bit sick over that period and I got to a score of about four. And there was one moment here where I briefly got to a score of four as well. So let's see how these scores compare to the temperature measurements of the Aura Ring. So that's what I've plotted here. So on the x-axis, so the horizontal axis, we have the temperature deviation of the Aura Ring. On the y-axis, my subjective score of feeling sick on a scale of one to 10. And each dot here is a single day. And you can see indeed that the moment that I had a high temperature according to the Aura Ring, I often felt more sick as well. So it was able to pick up on all of these score four days basically as uh, being a higher temperature deviation. And there is some nice correlation between the two. So that also indicates that my subjective score of feeling sick could be partially picked up on by the Aura Ring. So that's really cool because that means that a ring on your finger is actually pretty good at detecting if you're sick. I wanna take it one step further and see if in those moments that I felt sick, there was also a change in the number of white blood cells in my blood. Now you might be wondering how am I able to do these kind of measurements? Well, I used to work in a lab that specializes in immunology. So I had access to all kinds of cool machines. Now one thing I measured every three weeks was basically this whole range of immunological measurements. But for now I just want to focus on the number of white blood cells in my blood where any deviation from normal could indicate there was something happening to my immune system. So here I've plotted the concentration of white blood cells in my blood over time over the last roughly two and a half years. And each day that I did a measurement, I always try to take two or three samples, which are replicates, so two times the same thing, and they're supposed to be about the same. So that's why there's always two or three points that are relatively close to each other. So each dot here is a single measurement. And you can see there was a slight increase over time in my white blood cells. Now what caused this, I'm not sure. It could have been stress, lack of sleep, because I was finishing my PhD thesis at the time. So these could all be involved. But what I'm interested in is really big deviations from normal and especially increases. So you can see there's a few large increases here over time and also one really big decrease. So these are the things I would want to focus on. So here on the bottom you see the same plot again, but on the top now I plotted my feeling sick score. So the score of 1 to 10 that I discussed before, but now over a bit of a longer time period. And I actually reached a score of 8 at one point. So here I think I was traveling in Indonesia I got some pretty bad food poisoning. So there was a period here that I was feeling pretty sick. And you can see there were some fluctuations over time and there appeared to be, have been some moments. So these were the one, this was the one I showed you before where I had my uh, cold and here there appears to be another one where I was feeling a bit more sick over time. And like I said, I wanna look at these extreme values here. So these extremely high and extremely low values. So if I highlight those, then we can see that quite often these correlate to moments where I was feeling sick or I was just recovering from a sickness. So if you focus on this spot here, I think this is also a moment where I had a cold and you can see there's a strong increase in my number of white blood cells. This was the period we just discussed and interestingly here, there was a large drop in my number of white blood cells and I still have to see what actually caused that and after that there appears to be a slight increase where I was at sort of the tail of feeling sick. Um, this was actually a period where I think I wasn't sick but I was super stressed because I was moving to Vienna where I'm living now. So I had a period of quite a lot of stress. I also had a breakup, so it was kind of a, a stressful period. So that could have had some influence. Here I had some minor illness, I think, maybe just a really uh, a light cold, but there appears to be a large increase in my number of white blood cells. And finally here, this came at the tail end of me feeling rather sick. So this was my food poisoning in Indonesia. And even a week or two later, when I did this measurement, you could still see the results in my blood panel. So I think it's really cool that the way I was feeling is actually being reflected in the blood measurements that I did. So that was a little bit of a detour in the end, but I think it's just really cool that I have this data and I wanted to share it with you guys. But let's get back to the Aura Ring. Based on the data that I have, I would say that the Aura Ring is pretty good at detecting temperature deviations from your normal temperature, which would mean it is able to detect when you have a fever and also possibly able to detect when you're infected with COVID-19. So that's pretty good news. Also, in the detection of COVID-19, the Aura Ring doesn't just focus on temperature, it also looks at respiratory rate and heart rate. By including that data as well, they might even be able to get a better detection accuracy for COVID-19. All in all, I think this is a hint that the study initiated by the University of California, San Francisco, might indeed be able to pick up on new cases of COVID-19. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Now there are some problems with the type of measurement and the type of study that I mentioned, and I didn't really go into any details. If you have some thoughts on that, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel, because if you do that, the YouTube algorithm does fancy stuff and shows my content to more people. 
But of course, it's totally up to you. For now, I wish you a wonderful, safe and healthy day and see you in the next video.